What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Planet Xbox Podcast. I am your host, Best Spot, Kid Smooth. Got my co-host, busy, busy, busy man. ILP, Lord Attic, Gaming Attic. What's up, man? What's going on, guys? You know, what's going on, guys? It's been a pretty chaotic day, but I'm here, man. I'm here. You know, we got a lot of stuff to go over. We got a lot, a lot of a show, man. We got a lot of a show. Yeah, news is light, even though I got a lot of trouble on Twitter. We're on episode 11, of course, as we get started, man. Uh, what you've been playing? Here recently, I haven't really... I've been playing a lot of Persona. I played some more Final Fantasy 16. I almost jumped back on Destiny, and then I just didn't. So I am playing a decent amount of games, but I would say that like my biggest priority is right now I'm I'm reviewing a game called Alarium Shift and I've been mm-hmm. playing it on the Steam Deck. Okay. So that's probably where my uh biggest priority has been. I mean, how are you capturing gameplay? I don't. I'm not <laughs> reviewing it like a formal review, I'm just talking about it on ILP. Okay. Fair enough. Um because I was like, I want to review games like that. I'm, I'm playing exclusively on the Rogue Ally, but it's like, well, in order for I didn't have to like hook it up to something that the capture can play. I'm pretty sure I can use what the. What I would do if I was you is I would start that journey on PC, play like the first two hours, and then mm-hmm. just unplug that thing and play the rest of it on your uh, on on the the console or the handheld. Yeah. Okay. That way you got the gameplay and you could still play the rest of it. Absolutely. So, all right. Um, what I've been playing, actually, I've been binging some uh, Xbox 360 games. Besides upsetting people on Twitter. Besides upsetting t- people on Twitter, yeah. Uh, I've done. Um, so, you know how Xbox has that 80 percent like sell going on. Um, and matter of fact, let me turn my Xbox off just in case this thing. Um, but they have uh, this 80 percent sell. Um, where you know a ton of games that's in there is like 360 games, and I just bought like a crap ton of games that I missed out on during like the late 360 era because you know when I was playing on Xbox 360, I wasn't a diverse gamer. I played what I played. I played Halo, I played Gears, and I played you know some wrestling games here and there, but I wasn't buying every game that uh, released. So I picked up. This game called Mars, which came out in 2013. This was like the same year the Xbox One came out and it was made by the same developers, uh, developer Spider. Uh, And they made Still Rising. So I went to check that out, started that, you know, put it on pause. I'm going to get back to it later. Also picked up Split Second. Uh, didn't realize Disney actually made that game. I said went back when Disney had a studio, but really, really good semi combat racing game. Uh, Split Second. I put a video up on uh, the YouTube channel on my channel to talk about Split Second. Very fun game. Um, aged pretty well. Uh, it's definitely in that Burnout Revenge Blur sort of category of racing games. And then I've uh, also purchased all three of the Lost Planet games, Lost Planet 1, 2, and 3. They're all like $5 each. And I have purchased uh, the the two Force Unleashed games. I actually just finished the Force Unleashed one yesterday, and I'm, I feel like what appears to be halfway through the Force Unleashed 2, and um, I'm, in, I'm enjoying that game. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been really been playing, just a ton of Xbox 360 games. And that's cool because you know Xbox give you gave you that decision last gen, and I like that you know they really captivated on it. They brought as many games as they realistically could yeah. from like contracts and stuff. And they not only did they do that, but they enhanced them. Yes, the Xbox yes. One generation, and then they enhanced enhanced them in the Series X generation. So it's nice, you know. the The good thing about You know, the Xbox ecosystem is that option is there if you choose to take it. Yeah, yeah. I love me some backwards compatibility. It's uh, the most, it's the, um, it's one of the most underrated features uh, for the Xbox platform. Uh, I put out a tweet, uh, I want to say last week, that people were frustrated about. And when I 
highlighted that you know xbox series x can play the entire series of these like select franchises those franchises were assassin's creed far cry um call of duty um no of course halo and gears uh, a bunch of uh, third party uh titles too where you could play literally the first game to the most recent game all on one platform um and, and that's pretty dope uh man my eyes are burning um, which and, and you got to give backwards compatibility uh, uh, credit for that. So before we continue on, we're going to get into the Patreon questions. Not many Patreon questions this week. Actually, got like got like two. So we can you know, you know, definitely get into our subjects uh, fairly quickly. Uh, the question Patreon question number one comes from uh, Meridian. It says, do you guys think Microsoft will keep the wow subscription i think he's uh, referring to world of warcraft separate or will they throw it into game pass attic what do you that's a it's a good question i mean it's an existing subscription how would they treat that it just depends i you know right now i think you can play it to a certain level i think if they do anything with it they might add like you know you can play a little bit higher than that but you still have to get the expansions you know, they, they, it, it's, I would say my betting man, my betting self is that they, they keep it exactly how it is now. You know, that game's making a lot of money, but I do feel like, you know, you add that in the PC game pass or game pass ultimate, it's, it's going to give it a lot of value. Yeah, it definitely would give it a lot of uh, value. That would be a, I think a decision like that. It could potentially mess with the existing customer base, but then again, it probably won't because they, they do nothing with the existing one. But, you know, by just bringing it to the Game Pass store and, you know, obviously cross play and all that other stuff, um, I guess it would be a separate skew um, that if you are sure you could pay for World of Warcraft by itself. But if you're you no know, Game Pass subscriber, then that's that's your free subscription. I would do it. I don't know if they will. Uh, there's a way to feed both. It would make the most sense. Yeah. But we, we don't know exactly what's going on in that matter. So, Absolutely. Second question is from Dry the Gamer. Now, this is probably got to be answered behind the scenes, but Dry the Gamer says, how much does it cost to sponsor the podcast for an episode? <laughs> That's something you have to talk to BG and Smooth about. Yeah. Uh, I just show up, man. <laughs> that we could definitely uh talk about that hit us up on twitter uh bg is available on twitter i'm a, uh, me and bg would actually also have to uh, talk about that i didn't know that was a thing but i mean i would love to, for someone to sponsor an episode but by joining the patreon patreon.com i'm whipping wills patreon uh you are technically sponsoring you know the podcast itself by your support this is a podcast we do for the patreon and then it launches later for everyone else uh, for the proper exposure, once again, shout out to BG on hitting 100k uh, uh, subscribers. That just uh, the podcast being on this channel does op- get open to uh, more potential viewers. But what you're about to say, I think he's talking about like a more designated sponsorship kind of things where you know, hit may- maybe I-, I don't know what kind of sponsorship he's referring to. Like, does he want us to like shout like maybe he's a content creator or mm-hmm. stuff out or? Is he- I, I don't know. He'll have to be a little bit more specific on that. Question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually respond to him. Uh, like, dude, hit me on Twitter, and I'm gonna respond. Oh my god, dude, hit me and I wonder. Can you at people on Patreon? I don't know, but you can do that later. <laughs> um. Okay, so. What I was about to say, so light news week, but a couple of things, you know, happened uh, earlier in the week. You did a video on this. I did a video on this Microsoft Edge. They were teasing all these little video clips with the hedgehog running around Microsoft Studios. Uh, Xbox made a cameo in that uh, video because I think they ran past, you know, how they have like the uh, there was a banner for, you know, Xbox Game Pass and whatnot. But. There was a lot of speculation because the hedgehog, you know, 
reason why it created speculation is because Sonic himself is a hedgehog. Um, but it, I can see why one put one, oh, two and two together. The problem I had with it was like, okay, well, this is not Xbox and this is not Microsoft. It's, it's Microsoft Edge. So it's like, I don't understand what the hedgehog represents. Because uh, I recently learned that hedgehogs aren't even fast. They're not even fast creatures. You just download them. They're cute, but yeah, because I'm like I never like I didn't know what I did. I never seen a hedgehog in in action in real life. I seen what they look like, but I've never seen them in action. So it was like, okay, what does the so if the hedgehog doesn't represent speed, then what does it represent? Like I don't understand the marketing behind it. I do not understand uh, Microsoft's uh, the edge. They're, they're, I don't understand the marketing campaign. I don't know what it symbolizes, what it means. Uh, but all it did was put a, uh, Xbox fans in, in, in a frenzy about like, yo, what's going on? Does this mean they're definitely buying Sega? And um, the problem is, is that realistically, you can't Microsoft where nobody can tease who they're going to buy. They can't. You know what I mean? They can't tease anything until something's a done deal. And of course, if uh, an acquisition of Sega is more like a subliminal, yeah, a subliminal, but that's a lot of effort for something that you're that's not 100 percent. You know, what was it really effort? All they did was put a hedgehog on, on a video and yeah, but that's creating a narrative and, it's, it, and, and unnecessary a theories to create it. You say they, there's no way there's no way these PR teams, they work together. There's no way that the PR team for Microsoft heard what they were going to do or they were talking to them and they were like you know what there's all kinds of speculation that we're about to buy sega for the gaming mm -hmm. uh, portion of our company go do that like there's no way but why microsoft why microsoft edge why not xbox why not microsoft base account why edge i think that's probably right now there's a lot of stuff going on so maybe you know if the xbox version's doing good and xbox social media presence is pretty heavy but you got microsoft edge that's lacking behind a little bit maybe you know it, it's not getting where it wants to be present wise and in, in that type of environment in terms of browsers you know let, let, let's get the console war in it a little bit it, it, i mean what was trending microsoft edge on twitter mm -hmm. so you know it it could be what you said but uh, you know but the thing is is it makes no sense to use that particular thing. And it's like I said, this is the same PR company. There's no way they didn't know that there would be speculation like this. Yeah. 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 I, that's why I was like, I was like, eh. there's one many ways. There's no way somebody went through this, you know, process and say, you know, no one may think anything of this. And everybody points to Sonic and Sega. Obviously, Given the um, what came out during the ABK trial of the email of them uh, requesting to uh, speak to Sega regarding the acquisition, and we don't know what came of it, we just know it didn't happen yet. We don't know if the talks are still ongoing or if they're going to uh, pursue that potentially pursue that. Uh, we're still in a wait and see uh, basis, so anything that they do in collaboration with Sega. Atlas, Sonic, and we're, is always going to be under some sort of scrutiny or some sort of uh, investigation of like, hey, is it, does this mean they're going to buy them soon? Is this definite? And then we had something else happen that you know kind of threw us all off. But like, um, I understand you you feel in our signaling that this is potentially related to that. Uh, you know, Microsoft Sega uh, partnership, uh, Microsoft Sega acquisition, if, you know, if it does occur, um, I just find it hard to believe that they can, uh, that they will be willing to tease leak or sort of try to uh, tease some sort of future move of it, which, which would be a big move. That would be uh, too big of a move to, to tease. Because if you if you think about it, and what I said in the video, they they never tease Zenimax, they never tease ABK. They couldn't. These were these were huge deals. These they, these were these weren't things that they could wait till E three to do. You know, like deals these big that you know that require approval, require uh, 
other hands and stuff like that you, you can't date like stuff like ninja theory and playground and all that stuff they could they you know they bought them in the background and they just decided not to announce it until they were ready uh which was uh the, the e3 showcase uh the couple years back yeah i hear yeah I, I think at the end of the day you know this is all speculation this is the core of speculation we don't know if it's going to go left or right from here and it, it is what it is if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't yeah yeah absolutely i'm with you on that one but uh, you know if, if it does happen it will be a great day in gaming for sure definitely a great day for gaming uh next one sort of happened like today is saturday that we're recording this this news broke on a friday wow i feel like my days are like uh um getting mixed up but um I did not know that Square Enix was hosting some sort of presentation or an event. This, because uh, what happened yesterday uh, was a surprise. The uh, Square Enix had the Final Fantasy, I think, Quest Fest, and they bought Phil Spencer out on stage to announce uh, that Final Fantasy 14 Online is coming to Xbox finally. After all these years, and um, it originally it, they said when we got that that XO with all the Final Fantasy games coming to Game Pass mm-hmm. and all those years ago, like they asked him in an interview up there, was this game coming to Xbox? And he said, "We're working on it." Well, I guess it took him like six years or something like wow. that. Wow, probably six years is exaggerating. I think it was 2019 or 20. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, it took him a minute, but, you know, it's coming. The, the curious thing about that one is that, you know, we obviously we have our speculations and you heard all too well on my rants against Square Enix. Uh, they, Square Enix made, uh, not Square Enix. Did you like my shot at you on Twitter today? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was all right. <laughs> but not only, so it was Yoshi P who was, was you know, a big guy at, uh, Square Enix behind the mainline Final Fantasy series um, was very welcoming of, of Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer did make it a point to announce that you know they're not only they're bringing uh, 14, but they're bringing future you know Final Fantasy games you know to Xbox, which means it looks like they've have probably squashed whatever beef that they had because uh, it looks like Square Enix was doing all they can to work against Xbox over the last couple of years. Oh, with uh, with their recent releases and with their recent moves and whatnot, when you consider Active Path Traveler two, when you consider Forspoken, Final Fantasy sixteen, uh, uh, the, the Pixel game, whatever. Uh, what do you think happened? Because you had your theory of what happened of why, and this was all behind the ABK deal. I but I still think that's what happened. Because uh, I go ahead. That I think the the relationship was damaged at that time. And it's took Microsoft this long to fix it because for about a year and year and some change, something happened. I don't know what it was, but something happened. And I think now you're starting to see them slowly working on that relationship. Look, you can say what you want because I know you're not a fan of their games. Right. But Final Fantasy games are important to the ecosystem, to gaming in general. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the fact that we didn't get the Pixel Collection was a huge loss to us. The fact that we didn't get 16, huge loss to us. The fact that we're not getting Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, huge loss to us. Regardless if you don't like it, there's a bunch of people that would love to have that game on their platform. And now this is the early steps that maybe we can maybe not see the Final Fantasy VII games come because I think those are set in stone. Set in stone. You know, maybe I was, you know, looking too much into the scenario thinking that playstation was behind everything like closing like octopath traveler and stuff coming on the platform i think at this point that definitely wasn't the case and you know i'm not going to apologize to playstation because they've been making those kind of decisions in the past so obviously that's what i would assume but you know it doesn't look like that was the case but what i will say is you know i don't think this means you know i I want xbox people to like step back this doesn't mean we're going to get seven remake and and Rebirth, and 16. This means that when Octopath Traveler 2 came out, 
if this was before then, we might get that game. You know, Final Fantasy Tactics has been rumored to be in development for a while, a remake of it. We'll probably get that game. You know, I, I think we'll get Final Fantasies on the smaller scale. But until PlayStation stops dropping the bag in the front of the building, we won't get those bigger scale games until those deals aren't signed. But well, Square Enix and, and right, rightfully signed. Like I, I don't want people thinking that like I have an issue with PlayStation <laughs> for doing these kind of practices. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't care if they do them. I got a PlayStation for that exact reasons. I care because with the ABK deal, they were trying to act like they don't do this kind of shit. Yeah. yeah. I think Square Enix has have, have given Xbox the smaller tier games or the B tier, C tier games. They've, they've given Xbox, you know, Stranger, Strangers of Paradise. They've given Xbox Crisis Core. Uh, and they're and they about to give us the action adventure Dragon Quest game. I think that comes out at the, uh, I think, towards the end of the year, uh, which I'm actually looking forward to, by the way. But uh, yeah, Square Enix is the, 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 how can I say that? They, they, they're they're really sketchy when it comes to Xbox and, and the games that they're, they're published. They're like hit or miss. They'll you know they'll drop some games here and there, and then the games that you really want, um, they'll you know make exclusive to Xbox, uh, to PlayStation or Nintendo, and um, and that's what Microsoft had to continue to improve. Like I said, they already got that relationship with Sega, Bandai, uh, Capcom, and and a few others, and, and, and it's getting better with Koei. The Square Enix thing, I, I don't understand. And again, this doesn't change how I feel about Square Enix. I'm, I'm not a fan of how they do business. I'm not a fan of what's left of Square Enix personally. Um, I understand they play a role, a huge role in the gaming industry. Um, and um, it would be nice that if Xbox can, you know, uh, be a part of it. But it's because this is everything is so touchy or inconsistent. I don't trust Square Enix, so I don't rely. I can't rely uh, on Square Enix products and trust that they would continue on Xbox. Like a band, I can get into a Bandai franchise, a, a franchise that was homegrown from Bandai Namco. I can get into a franchise that was homegrown from Capcom um, on Xbox because I know and trust that those franchises will continue uh, to come on Xbox for sure. I feel because like even like you. I grew up with Final Fantasy mm-hmm. and with those turn-based games and even stuff like Dragon Quest that was around I didn't really play because I was playing Final Fantasy a lot, yeah. which I should have played more Dragon Quest. Though. I was stupid back then, but I can understand from you, someone that didn't really gravitate towards that area a whole lot that now, you know, you, you play, a, like, I think you just recently played a turn-based that you was okay with. Um, I'm Persona 5. Yeah, may- maybe. I, I've, I've I got. Know. I stopped. I, I like after the third palace. I haven't picked it back up. Not. Yeah, so I mean, that's a lot of time. Though. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's just like even a game like that that you still push yourself to get to the third palace. Like you're looking at that, and it's like, okay. I like this. I like this gameplay a little bit. You know, I might expand. But you look over at Final Fantasy. It's like I don't know where you're gonna be in five years. <laughs> like, so it's yeah. like, should you jump into the pool? That's what I try to tell people. It's like, look, like. It's not that Xbox gamers wouldn't buy that game. They, you know, they would support Final Fantasy. It's just the fact that a lot of it, when it comes to JRPGs, we get, like, not necessarily bottom of the barrel, but not, like, the big, big names in the industry. Yeah, yeah, it's very inconsistent in what we get. You know, we're not getting the Final Fantasy 16s of Forspoken and AAA. I mean, and I know Forspoken didn't. It hit that well, a uh, well, uh, come across that well. It didn't score the best, but the hype, the uh, production value of the game was, you know, extremely high. They had high expectations for the game, obviously, and they trusted that it was going to be as big as Final Fantasy 16 because Forspoken and Final Fantasy 16 essentially has the same deal two years, right? Uh, uh, which is absurd. For anyone to uh, type of agreement, anyone can go into. But um, I'm I'm happy to see that you know they come to the table, work things out with Phil Spencer and Xbox, and they really they they I want to say didn't they highlight that they're doing this because of Phil Spencer? It's like like yeah. <laughs> so he he clearly is one of the key factors 
of the people over there really, you know, giving mm -hmm. his all into this. And we've seen that this whole generation. You know, a lot of people want to, like, go up Phil Spencer and be like, is he good or bad for gaming? Like, it speaks for itself. Now, I will agree. And the, the most important thing when it comes to games, he's hit and miss. Like, we can't just highlight the bad games and not talk about the good games. You know, even though people didn't like Halo Infinite, it still had like an 87 Metacritic. Are we mm -hmm. going to start saying that's a bad score? Hey, uh, Gears 5 was a great game, had some low moments, but it was a fun, good game. So yeah. it's just like, you know, and, and hopefully Star, hopefully Starfield comes out and just punches people. I'm hoping. Yeah, um, that's really what needs uh, to happen. Um, Phil Spencer, like, my thing is, what what is Xbox going to do when Phil Spencer retires? Like, that's what, you know, uh, and that's what I get concerned about, like, what happens? You know what I mean? It took Phil Spencer to um, uh, talk Satya Nadella into investing into Xbox and trusting him with the gaming division. When he retires, I mean, who's going to be able to fulfill what he has fulfilled? You know, for uh, Xbox. Yeah, and you know, who would you would say at this moment would take over his spot? Um, just the way how they've been moving, I think it would be Sarah Bond, but I think I would want Matt Booty <laughs> or Bobby <I> Kotick. <laughs> I don't. Part of me feels like Sarah Bond's going to Activision when that deal's done. You think? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that'll be a change in the culture. So who you, who you think would step in? I don't know. Maybe Mike Yabar. Maybe he goes back over to Microsoft. I don't know. Like, um, I don't. I think. I think Mike Yabar. See, I think they're gonna take it like a three-prong approach you're gonna have the activision leader the blizzard leader and the king leader mm -hmm. and they're all gonna work with one person and i think that person's gonna be sarah bond i don't know if maybe they'll put sarah over over activision and then she'll just have like a dual job like she's over activision and she's handling the relations between those three and and microsoft mm -hmm. she'll just be like should just be feels like right hand right hand person like because to me, Pete Hines is in Bethesda because that's the person I feel is running Bethesda essentially right now. And mm -hmm. obviously will help like Todd Howard. And then you got Sarah Bond because who Bobby ain't going to be there. So someone's got to replace him. And to me, with the stuff that's went down at Activision, <laughs> Blizzard King, mm -hmm. they're going to want to replace him with someone that they know. It could be Mike Ybarra if he's willing to take the job. I don't know if he's willing to take the job. I think he he's definitely content with just working on Diablo games and Blizzard games in general. You know, he he's loved that fr those franchises. That's that's his bread and butter. And for you to ask him, obviously he deals with an executive role. He's got meetings all the time, but it's related to stuff he wants to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like now, if you put him at the position. He's going to have to communicate with Microsoft more. He's going to have to communicate with Microsoft regardless. But if he's in that position, he's going to have to deal with Microsoft a lot more. Because whoever is in charge of Activision is in charge of ABK. Let's be real. Yeah. You know what's funny, though? The the, the, the crazy thing the uh, about that whole app, Activision Blizzard, right? So Mikey Barr first left Xbox, right? And he went to Blizzard. And he recruited Rod Ferguson, who also went to Blizzard to work on a, to be the lead producer of Diablo. And Microsoft comes in the picture and gets them both back pretty much by the acquisition of Activision Blizzard. So it, it's just really funny. And uh, with how that thing, you know, went about. So I'm just curious, because like I said, I don't, I mean, did you know Mikey Barr leave Xbox because there was tension, or did he go for his dream job to you know Blizzard? And when the deal is done, does he leave or does he stick around? Like, I think it's a combination of both. I do think there was a little bit of bad blood between him and and Microsoft. I think there was friction. I don't mm -hmm. know if it was enough to leave. You know, for all we know, he pops in here, Mike's I'm out. You know, mm -hmm. that might happen. But I think if you know the it depends on what kind of personality he is. If he wants power, position, he'll go up. 
Yeah. But what the Mikey Bar I know, he doesn't really care about none of that stuff. He likes it. Yeah. But he cares more about the games. He's he's overcharging. I mean, if if you get technical, ever since you know, you could count Overwatch has definitely had its up and down. And, yeah. You know, maybe they they need some infrastructure there. But Diablo's in a better spot. WoW's in a better spot. So it does look like he is in some way, shape, or form having an impact at Blizzard. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. When he took over, you know, the first thing they did was they. You know, they improved things but while they didn't and then Rod got over there, they released a remake of Diablo two on uh, Resur- Resurrection or something like that. And then, you know, obviously Diablo uh four come out, you know, it, it's it's good looking, it's it's polished, it's doing its thing. I know they just had their season one that everybody's mad at, but overall the game itself is pretty damn good based off the feedback. I mean, I haven't played any of it so I, this is not you know obviously my you know pain uh overwatch 2 you know more more of the same it's nothing quite wrong with it um yeah it's just it's just funny how things is a uh, full circle with the whole abk thing which uh the last update is that the cma is supposed to have a decision week the week of the 7th of august which is the week i'm on vacation so i should be prepared to you know have some you know videos pumping out and hopefully some news uh break uh with that hopefully they're able to close the deal that week and 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 hopefully uh microsoft bethesda and xbox uh have uh the starfield uh marketing rolled out because i'm still you know on that for sure but um yeah, they got a, they got a, they got a couple things coming up, and um, uh, we'll probably get more information as the days pass with the closing of the APK deal. Uh, slated, uh, well, the, the CMA decision. If I could pull this calendar up, the CMA decision slated for the first week of August, and then probably a, a closing, you know, the week after. Um, there was some major uh, news uh, now on the opposite side. So the PlayStation announced that the ps5 has surpassed 40 million units and this is took place in 30 months which is two months uh 32 months which is two months longer than uh the ps4 which was able to do it in 30 months 40 million and this is also after the hills of the xbox financials came through and you know a lot of things were kind of downward how do you what do you think How, as an Xbox, you know, man, I know you don't really look at the sales and the analytics of things like that, or you don't care too much about it, but how does this really make Xbox look in this case where Xbox is in a situation where they haven't done anything wrong, right? They have a good console. They have good games in the pipeline. They have good messaging or whatever, and they're still in a situation where it's similar to last gen, it's like two to one PlayStation for for every one Xbox for every uh, one Xbox that sold, they're selling about like two or three PlayStation. So, uh, like, what do you think? How does this? I look at it from an Xbox point of view. It's like they sold forty million. I mean, and, and Xbox has. I mean, all I can see in their reports is like they're down, and why are they down, and and why are they are uh, allowing this to happen again? Why aren't they aggressive? Um, uh, on this side of uh, uh, their uh, s- matrix? Um, I think when it comes to this, it's just a matter of perspective. You know, I wouldn't say they're not being aggressive. They, they're spending $68 billion on a, a huge publisher. I think that is the definition of aggressive. It just all comes down to is what sells consoles as exclusive games for the most part. Now, I would say marketing helps definitely very big. You know, we might see a huge flux way of of consoles being sold when Call of Duty's marketing goes to Xbox. Uh, but until that happens, I think that's one of the biggest factors that's that's going to lead to Xbox selling really well. Is they they got to get Starfield got to hit, Hellblade got to hit, Avowed got to hit. The thing about PlayStation is through a whole the entire time they've been around really, but especially the PS4 generation is now. They are known for even if they ain't popping now, they're gonna pop later. 
And Microsoft needs to get into that rhythm. They need to have consistency, good games. You know, you can have some games that 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 don't wow everyone, but you can't have any games like Redfall ever again. And you need to make sure that in a consistent pipeline, you have games that just interrupt the industry. You know, kind of like Elden Ring, God of War, Zelda. You need games that when they come out, the industry, the internet just shuts down. Yeah. I'm, and I, I think that's what they need. They need more of those games. Now, you know, clever clever marketing with brands like Call of Duty is going to sell consoles, probably more consoles than any exclusive ever would. Unless it's like a big exclusive, like a Halo franchise that's at its peak during the 360 era. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Starfield could potentially push a few million uh consoles out and subscribers just depending on how good the game is yeah you know uh the thing is is that there's a couple things that really uh bothered me about this is that okay so i feel like playstation right now is at a point where it's like the iphone it doesn't have to do anything great it's just it's just a must-have item it's the end thing to have right now i told you oh man I, i forgot i have a i have a luxury um uh vending machine at my job and there's a you can rent a playstation 5. um you could literally rent a playstation uh 5 from it and it's like dude is it is that popular that they chose to put a playstation they ain't chose to put a switch in there didn't choose to put an xbox in there they chose to put a playstation 5. uh it's it's one of those things at that point they didn't put a vr in uh, they do but it's, it's the facebook vr there's VR, there's just a face, the Hive or an Oculus, whatever they call it. Um, the problem I have with that is that Xbox has let PlayStation become that thing. You know how with phones, right? It's the iPhone and then whatever Android's running on. You know what I mean? It's like the iPhone is the uh, phone. Sure, there other phones can breathe, other brands like Samsung could put something out. Do you want to go ahead and open up this? This wormhole that you have deemed yeah, we're, Microsoft yeah. by uh, uh, so they need to sell the Xbox brand mm-hmm. to Apple. Okay, explain your reasoning. I saw your video. Yeah, but there's when you do a video, it's just you. So I, I'm here. Explain your logic behind this. Yeah, so my logic is the fact that Microsoft can afford to let Xbox fail. Microsoft can close Xbox down at any moment, and it wouldn't them because they're that rich we know microsoft had considered shutting down you know xbox and and with the a core fan base that xbox has and the type of fan i am of xbox i would be heartbroken if microsoft decides to just shut it down at that point if you i'd rather than yes i'd rather them sell it than to just shut it down and for for them to send it to the yeah i, I yeah because there's of all the big companies, right? Who can actually afford to buy Xbox from Microsoft? Google, Google, Tencent, Amazon, and Apple. Of well, those, Tencent's out of the question. I don't think the American. Uh, yeah, but at the end of the day, like, but though they, they, they're an option that can afford it, though. That's the, I'm just going based off who can afford it. Would be it. between Amazon, Google, and Apple. But but Tencent can afford it. I'm not I saying that like- they're a realistic option. I'm just saying they can afford it. I feel like Google's did a better job at showing me supporting YouTube, even though they do miss a, a, a lot. I feel like they have supported the content creators. That I feel like they have a better understanding what the industry is than Apple does. I feel like Apple sees it as extra money. Google sees it as primary money. The they, problem with they, Google they is that they deal with the monetization stuff. They 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 deal with their their Apple uh, the the Google Store just like Apple does. So explain to me why you think Apple would be a better fit than someone like Google. Uh, because so the, I don't because I already seen Google in action with their gaming. They they, but, they when they were when they were invested, they was like, okay, we're gonna buy these studios, we're gonna pay Ubisoft this, we're gonna launch it, and they gave them what eighteen months, and they threw it all away, just shut it down, closed the studios, got stopped the services, and boom. Do you think it would be different if Google had? a brand like xbox and they owned it and they actually had a little bit of the market just coming out of it because i think they started something on their own and that's different than yeah. buying a company like xbox i feel like mm-hmm. if they bought a company like xbox they would actually let 
more time go by before they make any definite, uh, definite decisions. Now, I like Google to a degree. So, like, I obviously everything software like I'm I'm with Google Drive, Gmail, and I used to be like uh like before I, was, I iPhone my all my phones were like Google based and stuff. I'm I'm sure they're capable and they develop many relationships that they can definitely hold down Xbox and I think they will make you know decisions and obviously they can leverage they have they have a they're, they're, they're having a monopoly in the you know mobile stone sort of thing they got things to leverage um it's just that my first choice would be Apple because Apple makes pristine devices and they devices sell they market them they they, they stick behind it and people buy their products even when they don't want to like it, it's here's, here's another company what if steam try to buy xbox i mean for so gaming they, obviously they, they they try to get into the the console thing with the steam mm -hmm. console whatever the thing was called and it didn't do the greatest ones that they decided they want the xbox to be their home infrastructure <laughs> You know what I think? And this is gonna. I think what Microsoft should do. This is what Microsoft should do, and this is the easy way out of the hardware business. They should just license everybody to make Xboxes. Asus, hey, make an Xbox. Make a. You can make your own version of Xbox. Uh, Nvidia. Anybody make a version of an Xbox, and people just have a bunch of third-party Xbox like PCs, like these damn uh, handhelds we got. Therefore, Xbox can still sell Game Pass and still sell games and stuff that's exclusive to the, you know, the Xbox ecosystem. And these are just Xboxes. I think that's what they pretty much do. So Steam, Steam, sure, can Valve afford? I don't, I don't know if that's uh, possible. I don't, I don't think it will hurt. Microsoft. I don't know how much Microsoft like personally values Xbox as. You know, they don't. I feel like they don't value as much as I value it. <laughs> I hear, and that's that, the problem. And I'm a consumer. All right, so your issue, what is your biggest issue with mm -hmm. how Microsoft handles the Xbox brand? Um, Because I think it's marketing, because we've had a few. Comments. Yeah, marketing is number one. The thing is, because the way I look at it is that I have concerns, right? Microsoft, like I said, big tech company, they're rich. They can, they don't need Xbox, right? So my thing is, if Xbox is not performing, I I get concerned that like, yo, they're just they're not going to fund it, or they might shut it down. They the talks might come up with them shutting it down again. So my thing is, is like, if Xbox isn't performing, it's only Xbox's fault. Xbox isn't performing because they're not selling Xbox consoles at the rate they need to, especially this early into a brand new generation. Game Pass isn't growing at the rate that it needs to because they're not selling Xboxes. They're not advertising Game Pass. They're not advertising the Xbox. They're not putting money behind their biggest games that are meant to sell Game Pass. And again we're talking about it we're late in july early august there's not, not they're not pushing like right now there should be a crazy anticipation for starfield like starfield's job is as big as a game starfield is its job is to increase game pass subscribers by millions millions it's to pretty much increase xbox sales also by millions. That's how big it's supposed to be, but you won't know that because I feel like the their lack of marketing and lack of push and lack of awareness is minimizing Starfield or what start what it's supposed to be. It, I just can't imagine that Bethesda about to release Skyrim and Fallout 4 and it just minimizing what it's supposed to be by not advertising it and putting it on front street. You know, it's um it's it's I don't I don't like it. I do not like this new xbox i don't like their i don't like how they market and show up and present their games because it's they're not catching airs they're not getting views they're not getting no but you have to be a you literally have to be a gamer to know starfield is coming out that's that's bad that's bad you want to have i i, I do agree with you that 
the they need to do way better when it comes to marketing games. I feel like don't just have a month of marketing. You should have two to three. And that's just my opinion. Yes, depending on the game. A game like this, marketing should have literally, their marketing, I'm sorry, I, I, the marketing for Starfield really, right after E3 wrapped, essentially, that until launch, which is three months, the marketing should have just been going on from there. So I got to see how they handle August. You know, uh, it still doesn't make the fact that they should have been marketing longer, but it, if I had the choice between staggered marketing campaign with commercials on YouTube, cable television, or something like PlayStation does where you market one month like crazy. They're on Subway, they're on billboards, billboards everywhere throughout throughout all the bigger cities. Mm -hmm. They're on every YouTube channel you could think of. You got mm -hmm. every influence you could think of talking. That's the kind of marketing that's actually going to sell games. Yeah. I just don't know if they're gonna do that. Like, and that's the thing. And it's like, yo, you're really then you're setting it, then you're setting it up for like failure. You know what I mean? If I'm Microsoft, if I'm Phil Spencer, I got all the money, I got the biggest backer in the world, and I just signed my best friend, one of my best friends. I just signed him, and he got he's, he got he's giving me his newest IP. That's supposed to that's on par with Fallout and Skyrim. Yo, I'm giving him Halo money. I'm giving them Halo hype. Like that's that's what I'm doing. I was like, all right, we, we got to make sure. All right, what's the biggest movie coming out? We're gonna we're gonna. We, I would have a marketing tracker I, just for Starfield. What I will say is, expect Starfield content in the next. What what's hold on? Let me see what day today is. It's July 29th. As of, as of this two weeks. two weeks, expect Starfield like drastic dumps in a couple weeks. Uh, I just don't know if because stuff's picking up on my side, that means it's going to be picking up worldwide. Uh, like, you know, movies. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go watch Barbie tonight with my girl. Mm -hmm. I should see Starfield trailers in that before that movie. Yeah. So, you know, that's it. Is that, are you talking about they don't do as much mainstream marketing and that's what infuriates you? Yeah, they don't do enough marketing, period. Enough marketing, period. Mainstream, like, again, everybody knows Spider-Man 2 is coming out. Like, how do you not do a, how do you not do a console bundle? I guess the reason that it doesn't bother me as much is because I don't watch commercials, so I don't know if it's there or not there. You know, I have premium on YouTube. Uh, I pay for the Netflix with no ads, the Hulu with no ads. The yeah, but add, here's the other way. No there's there, the thing is, you can only pay for so much anti marketing, bro. Websites, you got banners, banner side banners that just shows up. Uh, random trailers that just play on regular uh, websites. Do you think next month Game Informer will have a Starfield cover? Game Informer should have had a Starfield cover this month. That. Like, why would they put it out next month? IGN should have had an IGN first. I mean, I give that August. It should be their IGN first. Gaming for the former should have had Starfield cover uh, last month issue. It should have been Starfield. I agree with you. Like, they're, 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 they're marketing, you know, I've always said Xbox's marketing hasn't been the greatest because they haven't really had anything like divine level to market like when they have like the consoles halo infinite they marketed that like crazy i remember them marketing halo wars 2 in big ways it, it's just i will agree that it is odd that we're almost in the month of the game coming out and there's no marketing really for the game and it's like i said i don't know like in terms of like tv wise or anything like that i don't really watch tv that degree and maybe once we start seeing more information come out about Starfield, that's when you'll start seeing it. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll see. It, I, I'm curious how hard they push the influencer side. It, and now let me ask you this. You know, let's say they start doing like, you know, info dumps mm -hmm. where people getting their hands on the game. Yeah. And you see people like Valkyrie on Twitter, uh, Twitch doing it. You know, PewDiePie on YouTube, mm -hmm. Mr. Beast on YouTube. Do you think that's the type of marketing that would make up for your mainstream marketing? Or do you think that isn't what you're necessarily looking for? 
Um, see, that's that relying on content creators. Um, I think you, you still do that because it's necessary. But I think they should... I, I, I want traditional marketing on top of that. Like, sure, I'm waiting for, I want to see the previews. I want to see people talking about it. I want them to start preparing for lunch. Countdowns, like, they, they've, the thing is they've done this before. They've done stuff with Skyrim and Fallout where they were better equipped. Hold up, let me, I think, let's, let's say Fallout 4. Uh, reveal trailer. Mm -hmm. It was June the third, two thousand fifteen. When did Fallout Four come out? I think it was like November. Three. November fourteenth, maybe. Fallout Four release November tenth. November tenth, two thousand fifteen. That's a. That's what six months. Yeah, but you got to think about it. that's when back when Bethesda used to reveal that, but. Fallout 4 was also revealed that with that reveal trailer. I mean, it, could, it was revealed like for the first time and their marketing went for six showed, months. They showed Starfield like like six years ago too. So mm -hmm. it, 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 I get what you're saying. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just think because, you know, maybe we need to get someone in marketing on here. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it would be cool if we can get Aaron Gerbert and like just pick his mind. Pick his brain? I, I don't think that mind. would be a good idea because he's not executing. I mean, I like I mean, Aaron Greenberg, exactly but I got my though. biggest like, beef what with him. Well, it's okay, his, okay. his marketing. How about if he came on the show mm -hmm. and he gave you numbers why they don't do that mainstream old style marketing anymore? And it's legit numbers, concrete numbers mm -hmm. showing you influencer and streaming mm -hmm. marketing leads to better results. Would you take that as an excuse or would you just say, why don't you do both? No, I would just say, well, PlayStation doesn't do what you do. They do the classic way and look at their sales. So he can't give me numbers when I have some of his competitor selling better, doing marketing that I want them to do. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying, I'm saying from, uh, from a, you know, an outside looking in spectrum, you know, it's interesting that they've chose because I would figure on Starfield, they would double dip. Mm -hmm. They would just continue with the influencer thing. You know, when it comes to Game Pass, you can easily just that is very marketable. But I feel like if you want to push a, a Game Pass commercial way, yeah, you could just link it to Starfield. You could have a Starfield commercial the way you want it done, smooth, and then at the end. You say it's in Game Pass day it comes out. Like, that's the way yeah. I feel like they should do their marketing. You know, I should be able to walk into a GameStop, and I know physical media is dying and stuff like that, but I should be able to go to the GameStop. I should be going, I should be able to go into a Best Buy and see a big ass cardboard cutout of the Starfield mascot or the Starfield ship. That's what I like. I want to see. I, you have to like make it an event. They can okay, afford okay. to do this. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. It's just me, you know, uh, being the corporate cog stuff that cog likes to do. All right. So what? So obviously we think it's too late. They they should have done this mm -hmm. sooner. Yeah. Ones of next month, like I say, they double triple down on marketing. Like you can't you can't go anywhere. It's every commercial on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Everyone's talking about it on YouTube, uh, on, on influencers, on, on marketing's when it comes to Facebook. Twitter, YouTube, there's all these sponsored ads on TikTok. You see people cosplaying that Microsoft's paid to do it. You see it on billboards. It's the subway. Like, would that, if they did that, and then that's, that's a stretch. Most likely, I don't know what type of marketing they have planned, but I would say them going that balls to the wall is very unlikely. But if they did, would that make up for the lack of not doing it the past couple months. I mean, yeah, it depends. It depends on how effective it, it is. Like yeah. wrong. We, there is still a whole month before Starfield comes out. That mm. doesn't make it right. They should have been doing this. Yeah. But what I will say is it has been a whole... They, they, they still got time, but they should have been advertising that game yeah. in July. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think they should have been... I personally think they should have pretty much utilized that since they did that Starfield direct from there on. It should have just been like, make me sick of seeing it. Like how did 
Deathloop. They over-marketed Deathloop. Over-marketed. But you know why they over-marketed Deathloop? Because they partnered with PlayStation and it was a PlayStation exclusive and PlayStation does traditional marketing. They over-marketed Deathloop. Didn't sell much, but they over-marketed right. Deathloop. I agree with you 100%. You know, the way that they market, you know, I got to see how they market Starfield in this last month. Mm -hmm. But if this game doesn't perform the way they want to, especially on like Steam and stuff, yeah. it would be their fault. Maybe they think that Game Pass is a marketing tool that markets itself, which if they do think that, that that's a mistake. It is so a mistake. A trillion yeah. dollar company. Yeah. You should market your own game. You shouldn't rely on the service that you have made. To so, because if even if you wanted to do that, if even if you wanted to sell the game to existing Xbox customers and PC customers, that means when you go into the Steam store, what you should see is just banners of Starfield everywhere. When I go in, the easy, the free advertising. When I open my Xbox, my dashboard backgrounds to change automatically to Starfield. If you want to be an aggressive marketer, right? Like, yeah, like that, they, they have the power to do it. If you really want to, if your goal was to like, all right, you know what? Let's make I'm sure at it right now, it's literally talking about, looks like stealth. It's some kind of fest. Like they, they're there. It's like some kind of steam. cell. yeah, if they literally wanted to go at where like, all right, we, we definitely got customers on PC. We got customers on Xbox. We want to get make sure that people who already have the boxes to play this game. Yeah, let's flood the dashboards. Let's flood the banners of the Steam page. Let's flood the dashboard of Xbox and Game Pass. And I'm sure the day or maybe the week Starfield release date, they'll, they'll take over the whole entire store page like they did with Diablo. Uh, remember when Diablo, you went to the store? And um, everything was just Diablo 4, right? I don't know if you recall, if you were on the Xbox store uh, the week that Diablo 4 released, it was just the whole entire banner. They did the same thing with Redfall, too. Um, those are those are things to capture your existing customers. They need to make moves to capture new customers. What are you going to do? What kind of marketing effort you're going to do for a PlayStation customer who doesn't have an Xbox or who has a PC to play? How are you going to get them to play your game? You got to you, you got to do. Come on, man. This is like I agree. But it's like I said, I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah, it's just, you know, I'm trying to figure out why they would not push as hard as they could because they're you too. Know, I want. No, I'm saying if, they, if they're going, you said something like, what if they showed you hard numbers? It, my thing is, they probably have these stupid numbers that they think make sense in their head, but it's in reality, it just doesn't work. Do, do you think that maybe Microsoft's marketing team is out of touch on? What Absolutely. They, I don't know what happened. They had this one woman, remember when a Series X was launching and they decided to, you know, premiere it at the Game Awards and stuff like that? They had this one, during her, that phase, their marketing was good. She was doing things. I think she eventually left. The, whoever's doing the head of marketing now is trash. I think they need to go. It was like, you know what? We're going to have whoever Zenimax is. And obviously when Activision, you know, come aboard, like the Xbox, they need to get rid of their whole entire marketing team and, and utilize the other publishers marketing team or, or, or hire somebody from like, like, isn't it just dude, there's people out there, somebody from Netflix, somebody from Apple, somebody from PlayStation, please, like to to to, to handle the advertising because they need it. And then effect they don't understand that effective marketing will lead to better sales and better sales of Xbox will lead to more Game Pass subscriptions. That's all what's about. People, the thing is, it's like, oh, they don't care about console sales they care they care about subscription. But people don't realize there's only real two ways to get into a Game Pass subscription, a PC or an Xbox console. Yeah, and if you sell consoles, it's automatic. That's it's an automatic. Or later going to lead to a subscription. Yes. So it was like, or you or, or help Asus mass produce those rogue allies and make them come default with like three months of Game Pass on there. Like that, they they got to get they really got to get aggressive. Um, I do. I know we're about to get out of here. I do want to address you know a lot of people on my because people uh, right now on Twitter people are calling me. You know, pony bot. Go on, under, your, go on your rant real quick. I'll be right back. Undercover PlayStation fanboy. Uh, that's what I'm being called all over the internet. Uh, shout out to Dirk Grig Griggity who did a, a video. Um, good video, but I was not did not appreciate you know the direction that you know a lot of these people are coming 
at me for and it's gotten me extremely frustrated with the xbox community the xbox fanboys and the thing is i try not to use the term because i'm 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 an xbox fanboy i'm an xbox i don't i don't care i prefer xbox but as an xbox fan like a like a, a passionate fan i care about the success of xbox i care about the success of the platform the console their games their subscriptions these are things i care about so when i see xbox doing things that it's pretty much essentially setting themselves up for failure or that's bringing the brand down or bringing their uh ecosystem down i'm going to call it out it doesn't make me a pony doesn't make me a playstation fanboy it, it's just like why can i have the why can i have point out things that i think they're doing wrong and i and I don't understand why it turns like I, I gotta be a bot. So it, and a lot of people took me saying Microsoft should show uh, uh, Xbox and Apple as some sort of pro PlayStation tweet. Had nothing to do with PlayStation. It's just the fact that if, if Microsoft starts thinking about they want to shut down Xbox before they do that, sell it. Don't shut it down. Don't 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 do that. Sell it to somebody who's willing to compete um, at at the rate that you know we would like them to compete. But not nah, like I don't appreciate all these people, all these Twitter profiles, all these personalities, all these people that think like I had people say, you know what? You used to be good. Uh, I'm, I'm blocking you. I unfollow you. I don't care. I play more games than half these dudes like and I like I play video games, right? I play video games That's all, and, I, and I play video games on Xbox. Nothing PlayStation can really do to turn me into a PlayStation gamer. I used to be a PlayStation been back in the day, back when wrestling games were exclusive to platforms, back when uh, games like Ratchet and Clank and The Getaway were popular. Um, but since I, since Xbox introduced me to online gaming and gamer score and all that stuff back in 2005, I've been an Xbox gamer, an Xbox fan ever since, and that's not going to change. So me being critical of X, some of the decisions Xbox makes, which is legit criticisms, does not make me a PlayStation fanboy or a part-time, what Dirk called me a part-time Xbox. Oh my God. It's like, I don't understand where they get it all because. Just to clarify, we gotta be wrapping this up because I gotta leave. All right, all right. We can wrap it up, you know. It feels like you can go on this rant for another 10 minutes. No, no, and I'm not gonna go on the rant for another 10 minutes. People got the video, the video's out there. My opinion's not gonna change. My tweets aren't gonna change. There's nothing nobody can say or do that's gonna make me change my mind or change my tweet. I don't I don't do anything to make fanboys happy or to make certain gamers happy. I kind of do everything for how I feel. But it's been a good episode. Episode 11. Subscribe, like, man. Thank you to the patron the patrons. Thank you to the subscribers. Hit the like button. Uh, share this. Subscribe to the Patreon so you can get this as soon as it goes live. Attic, you got anything going on before we get out of here? Um, tomorrow we're having Web Dave on ILP, so definitely everyone uh, tune in. We will be having an announcement hopefully in the next couple of weeks about a potential big, 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 big guest. Yep. Um, you know, I'm sure Smooth can ideal who that's going to be. Yep. Right now we're in the early negotiations, so don't expect nothing. I'm not promising anything. But I will say that we are we are trying to go to Batman. But I appreciate uh, appreciate everyone coming through that's watching this. And I gotta go watch a movie with uh, my woman. And I hope you guys have a good day. All right, thank you, Addict. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for making the show. We'll see you guys next week on episode twelve. Xbox is the best box. I am the best spot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace. All right. Peace. Sorry, but I gotta go. Sorry, man.